Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. I hope you'll consider <laughs> subscribing for lots more diamond painting content. And if you are back, as always, welcome back. Today I'm here to join you guys for my weekly <coughs> whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress and chat stands for chat. So feel free to whip out your whip and work alongside me. I'm gonna be working on a diamond painting today. And uh, typically my whip and chats go up on Mondays, but during the month of May, I actually have my weekly videos for the event Marvelous May, which I'm hosting this month, going up on Mondays. And so my whip and chats have been going up on Tuesdays instead, but I fully anticipate we're gonna go back to Mondays uh, after after the month of May wraps up. So thanks for hanging out while, while I've shifted a day. I know some of you guys probably count on getting those, those weekly videos on that particular day, but, um, like I said, I'm gonna be working on a diamond painting today and I'm really looking forward to catching up with you and just chatting about my week and maybe hearing from you guys about how your week has been and what you're working on. You'll hear a little bit of background noises, I'm sure. Currently, my cat is batting a toy around. His latest thing is to play fetch with us. It was actually quite adorable. Last night, he was trying to get my oldest <laughs> to play fetch with him at like midnight and my oldest was just dead asleep and Skip, is Skip's the name of our cat, um, who is less, he's like eight months old, nine months old now. Um, very, very playful, but he just kept jumping up onto Connor's bed and dropping the ball like onto Connor's sleeping floor <laughs> and it would roll off and Skip would like go and get it and try again and would just sit there and look at Connor. I'm like, Skip, Connor's asleep. like. <laughs> It's not gonna work. <laughs> it's very, very, very adorable, but also like really, really pitiful. So anyway, um, you know, that's just how this goes. These whip and chats are pretty relaxed and informal. So feel free to like grab a snack or maybe a, cu a cup of your favorite beverage and uh, let's get started. So I'm gonna be working on a diamond painting called um, Mermaid and Flying Jelly Friend. Okay, let's see, I've got the original artwork here, you guys. Mermaid with Flying Jelly Friend. This is actually, this is from Enablers Outpost. I just unboxed this on my channel a couple of days ago. And uh, it is by The Art of Seda is the artist. And here's the stats if you're curious. Um, 50 by 50, mm. 33 colors, including two rhinestones, which I've already gotten to work with. They're gorgeous. But I just thought, you know, I really wanted to work on a mermaid kit of some kind in the month of May because I don't see it as much with the diamond painting community, but it's really, really prevalent in the artist community, and I follow a lot of artists. Um, they do mermaid and do lots of like mermaid artwork and stuff. So I thought I just want to jump in. I actually have quite a lot of mermaid kits, so <laughs> um, including two that I just purchased today from Muni Made because she dropped three gorgeous mermaid kits by um, Fabka Deborah. Uh, the rest of the deity collection of mermaids, honestly, I wanted all three, but I could really only justify two. They all look absolutely gorgeous, and I'm gonna want the whole set, but started with two and I'm stoked about those. But anyway, anyway, what I'm using supplies-wise today, I kinda wanted to stick on theme. I have a lot of enablers outpost stuff, actually. We're gonna use this pen, which I've had for a while, but I was looking and I realized like it's got clean tips. I've never actually used this pen before. So we're gonna use this today. I love, 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 love this one. And then we have the this Enablers Outpost Chit, which I got relatively recently. Chit is not a swear word. It's just their, it's a Romanian word for putty. Um, and I thought the Siren Song one would be so perfect because it's got a mermaid and everything. So I'm gonna use this in my multi-placer. There we go. Just ignore me. Um, and then this pen is from Peachy Keen Pens. I really like this one a lot. It's my one and only pen from them, and I keep missing their drops and missing pens that I'd really love to try from them. Uh, the tray is from Muni Maid. This is, I think, the version one. Yeah, this is the version one. Um, I think that she still has this filament, but yeah, it's from Muni Maid. This minder, I think I got this minder about three years ago, and I was digging, I literally was digging in my email receipts trying to find where I had gotten this before. Um, because I just, I, I can usually remember where I've gotten pens from, but minders, I really struggle. So this, I think was probably from either Gina's Unique Boutique or Kim's Needle Minders. Cause it was those two and Gallery's Gallery that I was purchasing from way back. Those were like the first minder shops that I discovered. So you know what? I'll link to all them. You guys can go take a look at some fun minder shops and see what they have to offer. 
And then we're gonna use this Wee Wax, which this is one of the OG formulas. This one's actually in pool party scent. Again, we're kind of going with the, the water theme. And Laura is, um, the creator of Wee Wax is Laura Anxiety Art Adventures is her channel and, and her handle on Instagram and stuff. And she announced in her, she's, she's been talking about it a lot in her lives, that Wee Wax is coming back. Uh, so I don't think she has an official launch date just yet, but I'm very, very stoked and very happy for her. So I'll link to her her channel and everything so you can stay up to date with when this product is product is coming back. But I use this in my single placer. So enough chatter. Let me, we're going to do a fresh, a fresh load on these. I'm going to um, pop in a metal multi-placer. Actually, does that need washing? That might be okay. All right. So these thin metal multi-placers, I always have linked in my description box, all the accessories that I'm using today, I'm going to have linked in the description box below. So um, I did start on this kit yesterday and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, it's really nice to be working on, well, a kit from Enablers Outpost in general. Their kit quality is really, really wonderful. I've completed, I think, three kits from them. Is it three? I think three kits in total from them and been just really, really happy with the quality and the owners are just some of the sweetest people ever. Um, and I really love this kit as well. If you're looking for, if you're a fan of Alphonse Mucha and still looking for a kit for Summer with the Masters, they have several Mucha panels that I believe are in, I think they're in stock. Um, and you could totally snag one for Summer with the Masters. Um, and I also just have some other really cute kits and cute artwork. So go take a look. If you haven't seen what Enablers Outpost has as far as kits go, you got to go check them out. And pens too. Pens are what they really started out with and are probably most well known for, but they got some nice diamond painting kits too. So um, anyway, how are you guys doing today? I hope that your week has been absolutely wonderful so far. Um, mine, I've had a very eventful week, honestly. My mom has been in town and we have been very productive. And I've also just had a lot in general just going on with, with life. So um, I... I feel like honestly, my general pace of diamond painting has been much slower this month in general, not just because my, when my mom is in town, I tend to slow down quite a bit on my pace of, of diamond painting and, um, and all the things really like my, my reading slows down a lot because I listen to a lot of audiobooks and stuff. Um, it just, it slows down because we're chatting and, uh, we're getting stuff done and, it's just, it's, I wouldn't have it any other way. Please don't misunderstand me even remotely. But um, I definitely complete kits at a much slower pace. Skip, please don't knock around my camera setup here. Thank you. Um, so I've just, but you know what? Honestly, I haven't been too bothered by it. I've really been okay with this whole, like just a slower pace. <laughs> The Doctor Strange kit that I'm working on for Marvelous May um, has has taken me what feels like, whoa, okay, calm down, everyone, <laughs> has taken me significantly longer than I'm used to kits taking me. And I kind of just decided to, to shift my approach with that to be more relaxed and just to be like, you know what, I'm just going to let this particular kit take the entire month because... I want to go ahead and relax into it. I don't want to be feeling annoyed that a kid is taking me longer than usual to finish. Um, and you know what? I'll just let it take the whole month. And then I feel like I'm really doing the event the whole month as well. And I just worked on some other kits intermittently. Um, but yeah, just in general, things have been taking a little bit longer to get through. But I... I'm trying not to, I'm not letting it bother me. It's, it really isn't bothering me that much, even though I've mentioned it a few times. I swear it's not actually upsetting to me. It's actually just, I'm, I'm at peace with it, not to be dramatic. Um, but it is nice. It's nice to, to be coming over to a different kit because both the kits that I was working on this month up until this point were Diamond Art Club kits. And of course, don't get me wrong, um, I certainly enjoy working on Diamond Art Club kits, but I truly, truly, truly need plenty of variety in my life. And that includes the, the kits that I work on and what companies they come from. I love Enablers Outpost kits. There's a ton of other companies whose kits that I love. Um, and it's also, it's been 
a goal of mine for this year in particular and just an ongoing goal and value of mine on my channel to be working on and completing kits from a really wide variety of different companies for you guys because I want you to get a better sense for the many, many, many options that are out there, and, which there are so many now. There are so many. There's so many diamond painting companies. I will never be able to actually work on and complete a kit from every single one of them. Um, but I do want to continue incorporating some variety. <laughs> and I just kind of had to resign myself to, okay, well, the month of May, it I might not have as much variety. Um, and I like this month, I, I don't think I'm going to have the chance to try out a totally new to me company. Um, but I actually was just looking at the list that we have going of uh, shops with legally licensed artwork. Uh, the list that I put together and maintain with the, the mods and admins for the Diamonds and Emeralds Facebook group. Um, I was just looking at that and I have three or four companies on my list uh, that I, I think I'm going to try to prioritize trying out. Um, and they, yeah, it's just ones that I have been kind of eyeing for a while and I've liked some of what I've seen them post on social media. And I'm, um, yeah, I haven't placed an order with a new to me company in a little while. So I'd like to do that before the end of this month. So even if I don't work on a kit from a new to me company, I'll at least have one on the way. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it's, I am really, really, really enjoying working on this Enablers Outpost kit. The drill quality on these rounds is wonderful. And um, I like that there's a good amount of color blocking. And I, I just enjoy working on a different kind of canvas. I don't want to work on the same thing all the time. Um, and the quality is really good on these kits. So it doesn't feel like it's a it's a struggle or a downgrade or anything at all like that. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, this one has just been really fun to work on. And uh, I've been a little, yeah, I've been a little bit more productive around the house, which is one of the main reasons that my crafting time has slowed down. I've had the energy to do a little bit more in the way of some spring cleaning and uh, getting some adulting done as the kids like to call it nowadays um and so i've just kind of been taking advantage of that you know when you have the energy or the desire or the motivation <laughs> to to get something done it feels like at least for me it feels like i really have to jump on that and take advantage that's kind of what i've been doing um and then with having my mom in town she's been in town for almost two weeks and she actually flies out tomorrow morning which for you guys is is today we're very, very sad to see her go, um, but we'll settle kind of back into a little bit more of our, our normal pacing, which is a little, a little more chill, at least for me, at least for me. Um, but no, it's been good. It has been pretty relaxed still. It's been a nice mix, but I just haven't done much crafting because I'm, I'm chatting with her. I'm, we're, we're taking the kids out. We went out tonight because there was a new like ice cream shop that had opened locally and we were really excited to go give them a try. And um, it was just fun. It was just, it was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, and I am glad I'm getting some stuff done around the house and having the desire to be like, you know, maybe I'll switch out this decor. Maybe I'll mix it up and, and uh, maybe we could try to replace this at some point. Um, just not that we have the finances to do that sort of thing at the moment, but um, it's 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 nice to have that thought to be like, okay, yeah, I kind of like let's freshen it up a little bit, let's change it up a little bit, because I haven't really had those sorts of feelings in a while. Uh, just yeah, no general mental health struggles and stuff like that. Sometimes having those kind of of desires and that energy is just isn't there. So anyway, we. Um, yeah, got lots of projects done. I um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Just bear with me. Oh, I hop right back on it. So the boys have been thoroughly enjoying having my mom in town. They are so sweet and so incredibly affectionate. Um, both of them. <laughs> they just absolutely love it. Heck, even our cat really warmed up to her super quickly this time. And we just were all happy that, that she's here and got to do a lot of really fun things. 
Um, she even got Micah, to, my youngest, to sit down and play shoots and ladders with her, which was she was really tickled by. And I was surprised that Micah was into it, but he was completely into it, of course, because there was counting and, and whatnot involved. Um, and then we were working with my oldest on some, some good sportsmanship as he jumped into the game as well. Um, oops, hit that glue with that putty. And um, my mom and I got to do a lot of fun and really just stereotypical girly stuff. While the kids were in school in particular, we got pedicures. We had found a, a spot that we really enjoy going for pedicures. And it had taken us a while. We kind of came across it by accident a year or two ago. But there were a couple other places that we had tried going for pedicures. And it was the kind of situation where... I always felt a little bit nervous that they were going to be too rough on my feet, like with the little like cuticle clippers and, and all those all those kinds of things. I always, the places that we would go, I would just feel like they just were too rough on my feet and I was tense because I was worried, like, is it going to hurt? Um, and that's kind of the opposite of the point of a pedicure is it should be relaxing. We found this place and we've had nothing but really, really positive experiences there. And we go basically now every time she's she's in town and I decided again just sort of branching out and feeling like trying different things I had found this really really fun and 100% outside of my comfort zone nail polish color when we had been at a store a few days prior and it was this color shifting kind of nail polish uh, I just, I just realized as I was thinking of how to describe it, I was like, it actually looks in the bottle. It looks like the AB coating on a 310 diamond, which looks like oil slick, except it had a little bit more, it, it was definitely leaning heavily towards blue green colors. It reminded me of almost like mermaid scales in the bottle. And I just, as soon as I saw that color, I thought, that is completely different than anything I ever put on my toes. I tend to do a lot of like pinks and coppers and rose golds and whatnot. But I thought that just looks like so much fun. I really, really want to try that color. And so I bought the bottle at the store and took it with me um, for pedicures. And it, it went on a little bit more blue than it appeared in the bottle, but I still completely love it. And Micah, my youngest, has been completely obsessed with my toenails since. He keeps going, Mommy's blue toenails. Um, it's really cute. And then he's like, Micah's white and pink toenails. It's adorable. It's so adorable. But um, yeah, so I, I did get just a completely different kind of color. And I thought, you know, it's on my toes. It's not like it's on my fingernails. <laughs> For some reason, I just think of those more wild colors. For me... For me, I prefer that kind of thing on my toes and not on my fingers because it's less in, in your face, in my face. So yeah, we did pet it. We got pedicures. We got brunch more than once. Again, I we just fully embrace whatever stereotypes you want to give us because it brings us joy. Um, we, we have our favorite brunch spots. There's like an original pancake house, which is a chain. Um, I think that they're not just in Southern California. I think that there are multiple, but there's several, several in Southern California. And there's one that we tend to go to at least once each time she comes out. Uh, and we actually ended up going there twice this time. And then we tried out a new to us place um, that was local. It was a new place that opened and it was okay. It was kind of, it was kind of overpriced. But that's kind of our thing is we'll go to like one of our favorite regular brunch spots once and then we'll try to find a new place to try out as well um i just really i you hear how many times have i talked about it just this month i really really love brunch food okay <laughs> how long does it take uh in a given whip and chat for my for me to eventually bring the topic around to talking about brunch food that should just that should be the new thing that i that i track uh this whip and chat about 19 minutes so <laughs> uh, anyway, so we did that. We shopped. We actually got um, uh, a good amount of summer clothes for the kids. And my mom had a coupon uh, for a shoe store. And we got 
um, the kids each like a backup pair of shoes because they both kind of recently went up in shoe sizes and shoes are expensive you guys uh, so I was just kind of rolling with one good pair of shoes each for them and we got and we got a couple extras and took advantage of like some sales and we did well we did well we got some shopping done and um, got swimsuits for them because summer is, is just around the corner. I need to make a call and get swim lessons scheduled for them this summer. And I'm also trying to think through some fun ideas for my oldest for the summer because this will be the first summer since he started school that he's not going to be in a summer school program uh, because he hasn't qualified because he's been mainstreamed. Now, um, there's lots of new faces here, which, hi again. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm really happy you're here. Um, I have two young kiddos, two boys, and they both have special needs um, and have had some really, really amazing support systems with this, with our school district and with the therapists and hopefully with, with me uh, and, and my husband. But um, uh, Connor has my oldest... Well, I won't go into details, but all this to say that Connor has been, um, gotten to move into more of like a mainstream setting. And so he's not, he doesn't have summer school this summer. Oops. Let me just go ahead and drop my pen and my whole tray of drills. So anyway, that just means that instead of the, however many weeks, it's not the whole summer, even if they do do a summer program, it's not the whole summer with the school district. Uh, but it's still that many weeks that he's not going to have that. And I, we don't really want him to you know, just sit around and just play video games all summer. So trying to think of some fun things that that we can do and that he can do. Micah will do a summer program. But anyway, I sorry, I am always trying to think really intentionally about how much I want to um, share about my kiddos on the internet for the world. So uh, my apologies if you hear me kind of stumbling around those kinds of topics. That's that's why just to be totally transparent. Um, but yeah, no, they're doing great. They're doing really well. And, um, my youngest has had speech therapy and that's, he's been really loving that and that's going well. Um, though he really did not want to go to school today. <laughs> he had speech this morning. Um, and then we drove him to school. My mom had gotten up and, and rode with me and he just was not in the mood for it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he just really wanted to be with me and with my mom. I, I don't know, but it was a little bit of a, oops, <coughs> excuse me. I think just two this time. Okay. Yeah. I think just two, but he did. Okay. He did. Okay. Um, other fun things that went on speaking of my kiddos, my oldest Connor, he had a birthday last week and we had so much fun celebrating him. Ended up going to Chuck E. Cheese and it ended up being just the best party situation ever. <laughs> uh, we had been to a Chuck E. Cheese back in like maybe November or October for um, a different birthday party. And Micah hadn't been that into the games and stuff at that time. And he completely took us by surprise this time by just being all about it. <laughs> he figured out how the swipe card worked and was just living his best life. He found his like favorite set of games. To be fair, this was a different Chuck E. Cheese than the one we'd gone to before. And this one did have some different games and stuff like that. So maybe it just was more the right combination of things for him. But he had the best time. And um, Adam's family came up and Connor just was having a wonderful time too. And we had brought some cupcakes and we had pizza. It was just perfect. And as we were in the car driving home kids are in a little bit of an excitement coma from from the gaming and the noise and the lights um and just all the best kinds of sensory input ever uh as we're driving home and connor's just exhausted in the car and we're driving he goes that was 
that was the perfect day. This was the perfect birthday. And Adam and I were like, yes. <laughs> so, 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 so glad that he was happy. Because that's what the goal was. We just wanted him to have a good time. We wanted him to have a good time. We were talking about how um, you definitely remember as a kid how magical days like that like your birthday can really really be and um it's just fun my I feel like my kids are at a really fun age I struggled a lot when my kids were really little like babies and toddlers and the the really unpredictable and dicey like sleep schedules and not knowing if they were gonna you know what might be upsetting for them or um make them fussy like all those kinds of things that could be like really hard mental health wise to go through and I feel like we are special needs or no I feel like we're on the other side of a big part of that and like I can breathe a little bit and so I'm just soaking it up as much as I can uh because before I know it they're going to be teenagers I'm going to have a whole new set of stresses and reasons not to sleep at night uh from what I hear from what I hear but um it was it was a really wonderful birthday and I just was very very thrilled that we all had a wonderful time um unfortunately what tends to happen for me is uh at the end of big days and outings and whatnot like that inevitably I just get a roaring migraine after um I I don't know exactly why it is just a lot of sen I think just a lot of sensory overwhelm and just being out I don't know my body is is weird but um I just am kind of used to it now <laughs> and I know it's like well if I'm gonna do like an outing if I'm social actually if I'm even if it's people that I feel extremely comfortable around and like I don't have to mask or whatnot, just being social, having to be on in that way, or if socializing involves going out, even like when we've gone to see movies with friends, which is honestly, that's very low key. <laughs> um, I nearly always end up with a, a headache and or it turns into a migraine, so. Um, yeah, and especially now that we're going into the summer months, the heat is, as I've, I'm have i sure that I have mentioned more than once, such a trigger for me that it's, I'm just, I feel like I'm doomed. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start really trying to diligently track my headaches, especially as we go into the summer months, uh, so that if I am having them frequently enough, I need to refresh my memory on what my doctor told me uh, she wants me to do as far as... Um, if it's, I think she had said if you have them more than X number of days in a month, then I let her know and we discuss if I should go on a daily preventative med. Right now I just have as needed migraine meds, um, but we'll see. Um, I hope that they're not bad enough that I need a daily preventative, but uh, I do want to try to be better about actually tracking them so that I can look at it and see okay, this is how often they're happening, and here it is in black and white on paper, and try to track and figure out what the triggers are. Um, there was an app that I used um, a lot, I think last summer, and then my headaches really eased up as we went into the fall and winter months, and so I stopped really using it, but I'm gonna have to bust it back out again, I think. I believe it was called Migraine Buddy. It seems to be the app that primary care doctors and neurologists will point their patients to for tracking their migraines because you can track and note every single tiny aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I literally had kind of forgotten about that because I stopped, I didn't really have the need to use it over the fall and winter. So I'll have to, I'll have to I'm sure that my phone has um, taken it off because I have my I have an iPhone and it's set up. So I think remove apps or offload apps that I haven't used in a while. So I'll have to re-download that and see if it's still got like my old information synced. We finished another section, you guys. Let me just um, open up the next section because we're only, yeah, we're half an hour in. I got more to talk about. I'm not ending here. <laughs> Here's to, oops. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna uh, keep, you, keep you captive a little bit longer, but. Yay, this kit is moving moving along. I'm glad that it's not too big size-wise. 
Um, and she's so pretty. Okay, let me shift this over. But yeah, I know that I've, I've talked with some of you guys on here before that are fellow migraine sufferers um, or other kind of chronic, I think I don't know, a lot of chronic illness type type things. There's something about the craft that I think tends to pull in um, people that have to deal with this kind of thing because it can be very regulating and soothing in a lot of ways. So anyway, let me just pull this, make it a little easier for me and you to see. A little mermaid minder here. Okay, Let's see if I can slide it over to hold back that plastic cover. There we go, perfect. Do you guys use cover minders? while you diamond paint. Often, especially in the con like not in the context, <laughs> I'm not doing a whip and chat. I often don't pull out a cover minder to use. I'll just fold back the plastic. But there was one project I was working on the other day. Was it Darkwood Fay or was it Doctor Strange? That I just for some reason that plastic cover did not want to fold down and I was like, I'm actually gonna use a cover <laughs> minder this time. <laughs> um but they're really cute. Sometimes I'll just set them out so that I have a cute little companion. Ooh, look how close that... No, it doesn't look like it in the camera. I was say, that DMC almost looks close to the blue color in this tray. No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway. Um, I sound a little... I'm, like, listening to my own voice and going, I sound a little bit stuffy. I have to credit my mom... Did I, I may have mentioned this last week. My apologies if I did. But she nudged me to try a different daily allergy medication. She she had said, this one in particular isn't supposed to make you drowsy and is more effective than this other one that you tried. I think I had tried Claritin and it just wasn't uh, super effective for me. <laughs> Sounded like I was playing Pokemon. It was not very effective. Um, and then I had tried Zyrtec, which made me so sleepy I couldn't function. And my mom said, no, try Allegra. I was like, okay. And I did, and I think it actually is, is working well, but it's been a few days since I've taken it and I probably should just go ahead and take it daily because it's the spring summer season. There's a lot of pollen in the air. There's a whole new set of allergens in the air and I don't want allergies to be a migraine trigger. So um, yeah, I should, I should get on that. <laughs> we bought like a big bottle too because it's way more cost effective that way and she was like well and if you use it and it's not working for you then I'll just take it because I'll use it so anyway I have to say by the way as I'm placing these I am really 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 happy with these enablers outpost diamonds and the spacing on the grid I'm having very little gapping I was running into a little bit of gapping on the round kit I just finished from diamond art club the darkwood fay kit um, definitely running into some gapping with those round drills and some of the colors in particular. I'm not sure why that's happening, but I, I'll, I'm sure I'll mention it. Yeah, I'll mention it to them. But um, I just, yeah, I noticed that. And then I come to, I, I kept thinking, is this in my head? Um, am I just not doing a good job of multi-placing? And then I'm turning around and working on this kit and going, no, 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 no. This is what round spacing should be like, which is there's not significant gapping. They obviously don't fit as tight as square drills do, but um, there shouldn't be like notable gapping. So, am I, did I just get really bad at multi-placing all of a sudden? Like what happened? I go back and rewatch my own multi-placing for perfectionist videos. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway. Uh, another thing that we did last week, and this was this was really, really fun. And this will be a little sneak peek into Summer with the Masters content. And even if even if you're not participating in Summer with the Masters, hopefully this will still, you know, be a little fun to hear about. But uh, Adam and I went up to the Getty Center last last week. I, I'm quite sure I probably mentioned it um, in last week's Whip and Chat because we would have been planning to do it the next day after I had filmed. Uh, and so we did. We went up that morning and... It was funny because I remembered some of it from when we had gone, you know, 11 or 12 years ago, but a lot of it I didn't. And it was generally just a really different experience going this time than I remembered from before. I feel like my appreciation for and um, my enjoyment of artwork, like in this kind of context, I feel like has changed 
quite a bit, as in I have a lot more, a lot more interest, a lot more context and that sort of thing. A lot of it I honestly have to credit with hosting Summer with the Masters because I feel like I've internalized a lot of that um, enjoyment and excitement and appreciation for this genre of artwork. And so I, I mean, we were there for probably two and a half hours and Adam was ready to go before I was and that never happened. <laughs> happens usually I'm the one that's like all right I'm done like let's let's head on out I want to go home um I was just having a really really wonderful time and I had I'd researched a little bit ahead of time because I wanted to see well, well at first I was trying to decide if I wanted to go to the Getty Center or the Getty Villa which were both um funded and created by and or in honor of it was John Getty right um and one is in Malibu and the other is in Los Angeles itself. Um, and we've, we've been to both, but I really wanted to go to a place that would have the kind of artwork that not only I was personally excited about seeing, but also something that I could really enjoy incorporating into Summer with the Masters. And so I had researched a bit and was kind of looking at what are some of these special like, ex exhibitions that they've got going on. And there was this one in particular that caught my eye at the Getty Center um, that was, the title of it had something to do with watercolors and pastels, but the actual artwork itself largely, uh, in, in this exhibit, largely centered around female artists and or female subjects in artwork. And that was really the main thing that I wanted to go for. I hadn't researched specifically what other artwork this um, museum had. But uh, I, I figured, I knew, like they listed, when you kind of looked at the map, that it was broken up by time period. And it went as far back as the like 1600s, 15, 1600s. So I knew it was gonna have artwork that totally fell under the old master's umbrella. And I was just thoroughly enjoying myself and reading about the different artwork. We did see the exhibit that I mentioned that um, was all about women female artists and female uh, subjects and I just I loved it I especially loved there was this particular piece I should have pulled it up so that I could talk about it uh, but it was specifically a piece that had been done of a, a mother that was breastfeeding her infant and had a toddler toddler crawling all over her, for her and I think it was from the 1700s and it was super scandalous at the time and because then it went on to like a, a gallery exhibition or something like that and people were just completely scandalized by um it was a very tasteful like you couldn't see anything <laughs> very tastefully done piece of a of a nursing mother and i just kind of chuckled to myself going like yep yeah, nursing mothers like scandalizing the public since 1600 whatever um said as as a mom that like I, I nurse both my kids and I was very much you know if my kids needed to to nurse in public I would do so discreetly but I would also not I'm not going to go sit in a bathroom and do it and I was very much like I very dare someone to say something to me about me feeding my child um I know that, that probably raises a few brows but I just oops I'm sorry I'm sorry the point is that I was very, very tickled that this sort of subject that we treat as taboo and a lot of, of moms or just the public, like our society in general, treats as this sort of newfangled problem of like, how dare mothers like do this in, in public? That's so inappropriate. And it's like, then we have this artwork from <laughs> hundreds of years ago that is literally the same kind of thing and caused the same kind of like pearl clutching <laughs> as it does now. <laughs> I was highly amused and I just, I loved it. And you'll see clips. I, I took a lot of video clips of a lot of different things at the Getty Center because um, it was allowed. You could totally take take video or whatnot. Um, I think they just didn't want any recording equipment set up. Like you couldn't set up with like tripods and mics and stuff. And I didn't, I was just using my phone. But I did take a lot of clips. <laughs> and there was some fun like sassy artwork pieces in that same um, exhibit and so that was what I was really wanted to make sure that we saw and we had seen that we walked around quite a lot and Adam and I were thinking okay let's kind of head towards the exit we had gone through one room in particular where I saw um, there was a piece that I immediately recognized as work by John William Goddard sadly they didn't have any Waterhouse John William Waterhouse is one of my personal favorite old masters artists 
Goddard, I really like Goddard's artwork. There was a particular piece that was called Mischief and Repose that I didn't remember having seen before, and I really, really loved it. And then right next to it was this gorgeous piece that as soon as I saw it, I thought, someday I'm going to do that as a custom diamond painting. It's going to have to be enormous, like it, <laughs> like the size of the painting itself, which I swear you guys, it had to have been like 10 feet tall. It was enormous. And I went and looked it up because I was going to mention it to you guys. And I'll, I'll include the link to the piece as well. The name of it is Spring, not the Mooka Spring. Spring is just one of those artwork titles that I think gets used a lot. But it's called Spring. And it's by this artist, this Dutch artist, Lawrence Alma Tadema. And he was a student of Goddard's or he studied with John William Goddard. And this artwork is just gorgeous. There's this crowd of, um, it's like women and children and they're wearing like these flower crowns or playing instruments. They're like walking through, it looks, is it Roman? I'm like looking to see what's it just supposed to depict. Um, let's see. It's unclear exactly which festival Alma Tadema meant to depict, but the many references from ancient Rome all indicate a springtime celebration of fertility and abundance perhaps most resembling Floralia, honoring Flora, goddess of flowers. Interesting. So, um, yeah, so it's not clear what it was supposed to depict, but it was just stunning. The whole piece just caught my eye, and I thought that would be incredible to experience this artwork as a diamond painting. Not this summer, but someday when I want to tackle a really huge project because the level of detail was just unreal. I don't even know if I could truly capture it fairly as a diamond painting. It might just not even do it anywhere near enough justice. I could do a crop of it, but I feel like my, uh, I don't know, the, my appreciation for it largely came from how large and expansive and, and just breathtaking this piece was, just the magnitude of it. But it was it was really really pretty anyway so we're we're walking through and we're kind of like okay let's kind of try to find the exit and we pass a few more like really beautiful pieces and then we turn a corner we turn a corner and i look up and <laughs> at the other end of this this new like exhibit hall that we walked into at the opposite end from where i walked in i'm like that is Van Gogh. Like <laughs> that is one of his pieces. And I, I was just really struck in that moment because I, even though I had researched these, these centers, like the Getty center and the Getty village kind of decide where I wanted to go. I hadn't come across or hadn't absorbed that this was a particular piece that they had. And so my jaw just about hit the floor and I was like, they have irises. They have the piece irises by Van Gogh. This is crazy, just crazy. And that whole particular exhibit hall really seemed to be like, this is the highlight reel. This is all the good stuff. <laughs> like they had a few pieces by Renoir and uh, was it Rembrandt, Cezanne? Like there were just incredible, incredible pieces of artwork in that hallway. <laughs> and I'll have to, um, I'll have to share more once I do that particular. So that'll be one of the summer with the masters videos is maybe I'll even spread it into two because that was just such a special day. And I feel like renewed my excitement for summer with the masters and for this genre. And I'm so thrilled that I was able to go up and get that footage and explore, just explore that genre of artwork. And I honestly have to credit my co-host Anthony for, um, kind of not on purpose, truly not on purpose. He was just talking about how he was going to try to go to um, like the Denver uh, Muse City Museum, and Art Museum. And I thought, I, I'm sure I said this, but I just thought, I live in Southern California. I have access to so many incredible places and artwork. I have to take advantage. It's a crime that I haven't already. And so I'm so, so glad that I did. And I cannot wait to share more with you about it. And thank you for letting me talk your ear off about it, especially if it's not a particular topic of interest for you. But I mean, I'm guessing that you at least know who Van Gogh is and that it's really cool that this particular museum has one of his iconic pieces on display. And just, I did laugh to myself and, and to Adam and say, you know, 
I don't know if it's possible to fangirl over artwork, but I think I just fangirled over this artwork. So it was good. It was a really, really fun day. So we spent several hours there and then we were kind of ready to go. Um, and then we thought, well, we're up here in LA. My mom has the kids. We were, that was part of it was we were taking advantage of my mom being in town. She could get the kids off the bus and whatnot. So we thought, why don't we try to grab lunch somewhere somewhere down here or out here since we're all the way up here so what do we do we pull up yelp and find like a hole in the wall restaurant uh mexican place and had just some really really delicious um authentic mexican food um we both got these burrito bowls and um i had this really 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 amazing shrimp was it ranchero shrimp was that the name of it but it was like a pepper and onion and like chili it was not spicy it just was very flavorful and it was so delicious. Um, and so, yeah, we had an, I had an adventurous day, you guys. That is not normally who I am, but I just was, I was, that's how I was feeling that day. Um, but you can't go wrong. Also, you can't go wrong with Mexican food in Southern California, honestly. So that was a really fun day. And, you know, it's, it's really neat because um, at least in Southern California, admittance to things like art museums is typically free and so we got to go and experience all of this amazing artwork and have a really wonderful day without even having to pay for admittance to the Getty Center we'd have to pay for parking but like you know to have access to that kind of artwork and everything it's like it seems like they could have gotten away with charging quite a pretty penny but I think that's the thing with art museums at least like I said in California where it's maybe state funded I'm not sure. We had a whole discussion then about like, how do you think the funding works for these? We could Google it and find out, but we'd rather just talk about it. So that was a good day. That was a good day. So it's, there, there have been some really, really nice things uh, that we've been able to do while my mom has been in town, both with her and then just us. And it was a good week. Just, yeah, it was generally a really, a really good week. Um, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm thinking ahead a little bit to summer with the Masters um, as, you know, Marvelous May is going to be wrapping up here very soon. And then we're going to kick right off with, with summer with the Masters. And I am really looking forward to that. And I think I'm doing okay with not getting too much event fatigue. I've run into that a little bit before and I know others have mentioned as much as well, whether it's participating in events or hosting them. Um... It's, I feel like it's it's good to maybe approach events with the idea that just let it be low key. <laughs> um, I, I'm liking this approach of working on other kits at, at the same time so I can kind of go back and forth, have something event related, but then also have um, other projects going. I would really, this month before the month ends, I say it so often and I keep not following through on it, but I really would like to pull out my cross stitch conversion project and, and give it a little bit of love as well. Um, as far as what, what I've been reading, what I've been listening to while I've been crafting and whatnot, well, a lot of that did kind of go a little bit on pause with, like I said, having company because I've been crafting less. So I've been, it's mostly been after the kids go to bed and that's how, that's also when I'm, I'm filming and editing and whatnot. But when I have had time, I did finally start the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Mass. It's the same author as, um, she's the same author that wrote A Court of Thorns and Roses, and she wrote the Crescent City series, which I've also, I, I had recently read the first two books in that series. The third one's coming out next, early next year. And um, some of my girlfriends and I were saying we really wanted to read and or in one of their cases reread the Throne of Glass series before the author's next book comes out next year. The Throne of Glass series is it's chunky. It's a long, long book series. Uh, I've been listening to it on audiobook and... I crank up that speed. If you didn't know, uh, yeah, you can crank up the speed you listen to books at. And I really appreciate that uh, I listen to my audiobooks to the Audible app and it will let you increase speed by even sometimes as little as a half a percent. 
And so I'll just gradually increase the speed until it's like, okay, now I'm used to this speed. Let's crank it up another half a percent. And until I get up to about two times speed, and that's usually about where I say, okay, I'm not going to go any, any faster. It's starting to sound too distorted to even me. So that does help get through the books a bit, a bit more quickly. But uh, yeah, we ended up starting on because apparently there is some debate about what order to read these books in the Throne of Glass series, I mean, um, as far as which which ones were published first and which ones chronologically come first. And I did see someone, because I'm in some of, I, of course I am, in some of these Facebook groups for, for the author's books, uh, the argument that I saw someone pose as well, if you were watching the Star Wars movies or if someone you knew was watching the Star Wars movies for the first time, would you tell them to start with the prequels because those chronologically came first or the original trilogy because those were created first and released first. And also I would argue and other people would argue because of the emotional weight and payoff of the big reveal, which at the time was a big deal and wasn't done in a lot of films, the big reveal that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Like that was now it's like well yeah everyone knows that but no like not everyone didn't know that at the time and that wasn't the kind of twist done often in movies it was truly a shock and so there was an emotional gut punch in that moment it was very iconic and so for me it's it's kind of like if you watch the the prequels like episodes one two and three first it completely robs that moment even though it's like well at this point everyone knows that Peter is Luke's father like I, but I don't know so but I still took that mentality along with some other kinds of ideas that, and input that people had and so the the consensus was because we did chat about it as a group and kind of decide like let's start with um the actual throne of glass is the first the name of the first book and also the name of the series which it gets a little confusing. It's the same way with the Court of Thorns and Roses. It's like that's the name of the first book in the series, and it's also the name of the series. I don't know, whatever. It's fine. But I'm enjoying it. I'm about halfway through it. And it's a different vibe. It's um it feels like the world is bigger <laughs> and it, like it's gonna be a bit more just that much more fleshed out. Don't worry, no spoilers. I'm not gonna spoil anything. But yeah, I'm like halfway through it and I'm enjoying it. I think that someone said, did someone tell me that that was the first book that Sarah J. Mass actually wrote, maybe? But yeah, so we'll see. Oh, I just want the camera again. I've been doing that a lot. My apologies. But yeah, no, it's been good. Um, I finished my rewatch of the Shadowhunters TV show. I really enjoy that show. <laughs> um, and now I'm back to my my show that I always come back to for rewatches, which is Supernatural. Speaking of Supernatural, I'm very, 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 very excited. I actually just last week ordered um, a custom of some Supernatural fan art that I got the permission of the artist to order. And I'm very, very, very much looking forward to that. Um, I ordered the custom from Jaded Gem Shop. And I love that, yeah, she she actually requires that you send proof that you have the artist's permission before she'll print artwork um, as a custom. And I mean, it'll be a little while because hers, all of her kits are made to order and whatnot. It'll be a little while before that actually comes in. But I am really excited about it. I actually have quite a lot of Supernatural uh, themed cover minders and I even have a supernatural pen that my friend Lindsay had custom made for me from Bistro Blanks and I'm like I'm gonna use all of the supernatural things when this kit comes in uh, so I did have to decide I had the very hard decision of what size do I get this in like how big does this need to be to do the original artwork um, justice and um I, I'm stoked. So of course I'll unbox that here when it comes in, but it's probably gonna, yeah, it'll be a couple months. So you just be patient with me. <laughs> help me, help me wait. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited. I, I, it's not something that I typically do like ordering customs in general, but, um, I, I've done that a little more often lately and may yet again, we'll see. So, um, as far as what to expect this week, content wise, it'll be 
kind of the usual suspects. I'll have some unboxings. I'll probably try to film a post review of Darkwood Fay, which I completed. And um, I should do a small shop haul again soon, but I'm not totally sure that that'll happen this week. Um, I know this weekend I'll have, I need to, I need to talk with my, my Patreon members because I do at the end of each month, um, a monthly live that's exclusive to one of the particular tiers. So I'll have that. Um, and yeah, unboxings. And oh, the other thing I want to do this week that's on my list of to do's that's not specifically content related as far as something you'll see right now, but it's kind of just what I mentioned earlier about really wanting to um, actually order from. I actually want to place an order and try out a new to me shop. I have a few shops on my list to try. I'm um, just, I don't, I don't have them in front of me, but off the top of my head, it's um, Diamond Dot Artistry and Diamond Art Studios UK and um, Creations to Clo has some really pretty ones. So there's a few, there's a few different shops. And even if one isn't, it, even though I'll have to narrow it down to probably just one to order from right at the moment, the others will definitely still stay on my list to order from, from soon. So um, yeah, stay tuned. I'm not sure. I think most of the, the companies that I'm looking at at the moment are, and, and most of the companies that I haven't tried yet, they're overseas. And so I don't know if they drop ship or if they ship straight from their respective countries respective countries or not so I just am anticipating oh there might be a little bit longer shipping turnaround time and that's that's fine I'm it's I have plenty in my stash to work on so not a big deal but you guys we're almost an hour in so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this whip and chat and let you guys go thank you for hanging out with me today I I truly enjoy getting to catch up with you on what I've been up to during the week and just chat and um, now is when I get to hear from you so let's see if you made it all the way to the end uh, some kind of ocean related emoji it can be a mermaid I think we had a mermaid pretty recently as, as our end of whip and chat emoji but it could be a mermaid or it can be just something that's generally ocean related is there a jellyfish emoji I don't know that there is but that would be really cute because there's a jellyfish in this artwork but yay, I will link to this kit and all of the accessories and whatnot below. Had a really nice experience working with this, this, this scented putty, this enablers outpost chit, and with this WeWax. Uh, stay, stay tuned for um, new information about WeWax relaunching from Laura the Anxiety Art Adventures. Fingers crossed, I'm so excited for when that comes. But yeah, um, and if if you made it all the way to the end too, or just, you know even if you didn't and you thought of it. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section just how you're doing. How's your week been? What were you working on while we chatted? Um, and yeah, just let me know how you're doing. So thank you again for watching. Feel free to hit the subscribe button if you made it all the way to the end and you're not already subscribed because you'll probably like it here. Uh, have an amazing rest of your week. I hope that you are doing well, taking care of yourself, staying safe, all the things, and I will chat with you in the next one. Bye.